All right, welcome back again. This is Frank DeMore with part two for March 21st, 2011. Now we're going to get into Psalm 83. Psalm 83 is a prophecy that hasn't been fulfilled yet, although we do see the stepping stones to this prophecy that will be fulfilled very soon. And this war uh, will be a war against uh, Israel, against the bordering nations who come against Israel in the last days, primarily because of uh, we know from what Zechariah tells us that Israel will be that burdensome stones and all the people will be coming against it. And so Psalm 83, we believe that that war will begin because the peace process will fall apart, which it's been stalled for the last year and a half or two years almost. And uh, when the Palestinians in the Arab world knows that they can't get East Jerusalem back by talk, that they're going to go in and try to take it by force. Now, when you come to my website, if you're here at YouTube and you go to my website, you'll be able to scroll down and to uh, read the articles. I have the links there. So go to www.bibleprophecyman.com and you'd be able to see all the articles that I'm talking about. And right now, let me read you a, li a, a little piece of the news. It says, facing a possible new conflict against the Hamas, concern is growing within the IDF regarding increased efforts by the Palestinian terrorist groups to dig tunnels under the border that could be used to infiltrate the, into Israel and perpetrate attacks. According to the IDF sources, and that would be the uh, Israeli Defense uh, Forces. The number of tunnels has grown in recent years. Hamas is under orders to dig terror tunnels along the border. And it goes on to tell us that the Hamas uh, has split into five different regional brigades, some in the north of Gaza, central Gaza, and it tells you where they are. Um, now, it also says that the Palestinian terror groups in Gaza have made some major improvements to their military capabilities since Operation Cast Lead over two years ago. Now if you don't know what Operation Lead is, that was there was some problems that started off with mortar shells being fired in from uh, from uh, Gaza into the Israeli territory. Lebanon got involved and they started to to do the, uh, the lobbying in of these mortars and it ended up being that Israel had to go in. They moved into Lebanon, and it was called Operation Lead Cast. So they stopped the uh, uh, the bombardment in Gaza by moving in. <coughs> Excuse me, into the Gaza, and that's what L Operation Lead Cast was. And it goes on to say it is under it uh, Operation Lead Cast over the year two years. It is understood. One of these improvements has been a missile capability with the addition of long-range rockets, like the Iranian-made uh, Faj Five, that has been reportedly smuggled into Gaza and can reach Tel Aviv. Hamas and Islamic Jihad are also believed to have obtained new guided anti-tank missiles like that of the Cornet, uh, the Faget, and the uh, Sagara, one of which fired at an IDF patrol on Friday. The IDF believes that the Hamas is also working to improve its communication capabilities. So what you have here is, if you haven't been paying attention, Arms have been shipped in from Iran and made in their way to the Gaza Strip. Many of these arms have been brought in to Syria and they've been filtering down into Lebanon and then into the Gaza. And they're getting ready for this uh, Psalm 83 war. And we see the handwriting on the wall. It's not if it's going to happen. We're told that this war is going to happen. We don't know the exact scenario, but we can see the developments that will be leading to that war. Now, I want to turn my attention to Benjamin Netanyahu in Iran's Ahmadinejad because there's a lot of tension between Iran and Israel. And Iran has been very, very influential in getting arms into Syria, making its way down into Lebanon, as I said, and then finally getting into the hands of the PLO. Now, Lebanon is a satellite nation 
of uh, Iran, so is Syria, and the, the Palestinians who live in Gaza, essentially, they're uh, also a satellite people of Iran, and are all under the same dream, and that dream is to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. And if you never heard of it, Psalm 83 does tell us very specifically that they will be coming down to counsel with themselves to say, let's wipe Israel out so that her name isn't mentioned anymore. It's gone. In other words, wipe Israel out. Now let me read this article to you, see how much time I have here. It says, if Tehran continues with its nuclear program, other nations should threaten it with military action, Benjamin Netanyahu has said. Now again, just to refresh your mind, the, there's been uh, resolutions made against Iran, UN uh, Security Council came together and they said that we're going to impose these sanctions against Iran because Iran is trying to get a nuclear weapon. They've, they're now getting the material for this nuclear weapon. Uh, Ahmadinejad has said in many, many times that he wants to destroy Israel and there's no doubt that he'll use this weapon uh, as a means to destroy it, Israel if the world allows him to. Now what's happening, no one is really taking uh, dramatic actions against Ahmadinejad by stopping him and this is a concern of Israel. So with that let me go on. It says the sanctions imposed on Iran by the United Nations Security Council are not enough, the Israeli Prime Minister told CNN. He expressed concerns that Iran may gain additional influence during the recent upheaval across the Middle East. In other words, why the world is watching what's going on in, uh, in Lebanon uh, or, or Syria now that you're riots, and I'm going to cover some of this news in a little bit, uh, and Libya where they're fighting against their own people and now we see that uh, France, Great Britain, and now that the United States uh, is getting involved in sending, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, guided missiles into Lebanon. So the world is going nuts. And what Benjamin Yat, who is saying, is that they will be taking this time uh, because the world is so concerned and they're focused on over there to get these bombs and get the material for these bombs. And Benjamin Netanyahu doesn't want to wait. He wants action to be taken against these people. So this is essentially what he is saying. Iran should know that if it fails to cooperate, there will be credible military actions. Now, let me just tell you something about Israel. And you have to look at in the past. What have they done in the past? Now, if you've never been to my website and you don't know the news and you don't know the history about Israel, when Israel warns that they're going to do something, they always carry through, especially when it when it involves their security if they believe that their existence is threatened they move now Israel warned Syria in 2007 that in you better stop what you're doing because they were building nuclear facilities Syria scoffed them they didn't listen Israel went in there and they blew up the uh, the buildings and it stopped the nuclear program Israel also did that to Saddam Hussein and, uh, and warned them when they were building their nuclear weapons facilities. Israel warned them. They didn't listen to Israel. Israel went in there and they took them out. Now Israel is warned Iran. Now some time has been uh, gone by since Israel issued their first warning. But Israel did issue that warning and now the words again. Here we are on March 21st. And he's telling them again because the sanctions aren't working. There isn't any nation that really putting this pressure uh, to take away these nuclear arms or the quest for the nuclear arms away from Iran. And this is a warning that most people should really home into because Israel doesn't make these warnings without actions. If they, if they feel that their security is threatened, which they do. Let me go on. It says, Netanyahu said, he believes it is the only thing that could stop Tehran's nuclear program. And according to Prime Minister, such, such sanctions from the international community would, would uh, knock out Iran's nuclear facility. If the strike is unav 
unavoidable the decision is adopted it would not be that difficult and would be perf uh, preferably led by Washington he noted so what he was saying is uh, and I can understand why he said this, that any attack against Iran should be led by the United States. Because he knows that if Israel goes in alone, then the world will come against Israel, uh, you know, like ants to a, a sugar cube. And he, he knows that he needs someone else to do it. However, I don't believe that Benjamin Netanyahu uh, can wait and I don't believe that the United States has enough gumption uh, to go in and to, to start bombing Iran because one of the things that uh, I listened to Hillary Clinton talk about the other day that she said that there's certain problems uh, about going into Libya and one of those problems is first of all you're gonna have to deal with the Russians because the Russians have alliances with Libya and you're going to see how important this news is when I tie in what Putin just said. So let me go on here. <clears throat> it says serious military action means that Iran's nuclear, uh, entire nuclear potential would be destroyed. Otherwise, the nuclear Tehran will be threat not only to Israel but to the U.S. and Europe as well. Uh, the the Israeli leader argued. <clears throat> so it goes on in one section here. Iranian President Hamad Ahmadinejad has stated that no United Nations Security Council resolutions can curb the Islamic Republic nuclear ambitions. In other words, he's telling them, I don't care what you're going to do, what kind of sanctions, they're not going to work. And they are not going to work. I know that, that they're not going to work. If you listen to what the leader of Iran says, you'll know they're not going to work. It says, even if they issue a thousand, now this is what Iran is saying. Uh, even if they issue a thousand such uh, such documents, we won't care. And Iran will keep deploying its peaceful nuclear program, Ak Ahmadinejad told Fars News Agency. So he's just saying, I don't care how many sanctions they put on us. We're not going to stop. And it isn't a it, it isn't power nuclear power uh, to uh, to light up Iran. They're in a quest to destroy Israel. That's the real quest. So if you go to my website, you'll be able to see uh, these different, the news that I've, I have. There's two different links there that you can click to and read the whole entire article. But I wanted you to understand that you're going to hear in the news in a not too distant future. We can't tell you exactly how long it will be, but you're going to hear news that uh, there is there's been an assault on Iran uh, by, by either Israel or maybe a combination of nations. Probably, I, I believe in my heart that Israel has, is the only nation that really uh, has enough guts to do something like that and it will be based solely on their security. They're afraid that the same thing will happen like what Hitler did when Hitler warned uh, Israel and they were actually de exterminating them. That he, Benjamin Netanyahu, said that we're never going to let that happen again. And I believe that this is one of the reasons why he'll go in if no one else uh, goes in with them, and he'll do it alone for the sake of uh, the security of the nation of Israel. So scroll down because there's other news uh, pertaining to, to this uh, Ezekiel's war coming up and also the Psalms war.